what does originality mean? Each of us is a unique individual shaped by our passions, our interests, and our hobbies. Yes, we might have similar passions and interests, but it's the way we were raised that has shaped and conformed those passions. Good morning, my name is Joshua Marsh, and I aspire to be original in a culture that thrives on normalcy. Growing up, I grew up with two wonderful parents, who are right over there, that raised me to be adventurous, to explore, to have fun, and to travel. It's because of them that I took up my love for photography. It was because of them that I held the camera for the first time and took pictures. I was the five-year-old that would take pictures of them and people would go, wow. And I'd be like, it's okay, you know, I do it. And then as I went on in life, I started to take more and more until they purchased me my very first camera. Now, I'm not gonna say they were great photos, but they were photos and that's all that mattered. And it was something that I loved to do. It was a way for me to capture what I loved and to be able to put into memory things that I did. Um, granted, some of them are subpar, but I didn't look back then and say, oh, that photo, it's not good. No, it was just a photo that I took that at that point I loved. Now looking back, I can critique it and realize that there were things that needed to be worked on, especially if you move on to this purple waterfall. Uh, <laughs> My, I really like bold, vibrant colors, which is still true today, but less so in my photos. <laughs> but <laughs> these photos shaped who I am, and I started to take more and more photos, and I would take photos on trips and while backpacking with friends, and I just loved what taking photos would do and how it was relaxing and it was enjoyable. And there was just something about it that when you're clicking a shutter and it's just you and the camera and the world around you, there's not a better experience, whether it's the bright in the morning before everyone else gets up or late at night after everyone else gets to bed. Even taking photos, I still lose sleep. That's all right. But as I moved on in life, I started to hone my craft. And I also realized that there was a special niche of photos that I really enjoyed. And it was traveling to places that I'd either been to before and knew I loved or exploring new places and taking photos of those places. So it could be anything from uh, the top left photo, which is just right here in Los Angeles, out uh, on the coast with a friend of mine, and just finding places in my area. It also be the your top right. I'm gonna explain everything in your view, just so you know. Uh, your top right, which is Zion National Park uh, in Utah. A beautiful place that I've only ever been to once and I would love to go back again because I look back on these photos that I have and just the beauty that's in these photos is incredible. Um, also across the country on the bottom left uh, to a small lake in the middle of Michigan. Um, and also one of my favorite photos I've ever taken is bottom right in Sydney, Australia when the first time I ever was able to leave the country and explore a completely different country and a completely different culture. There's just something to say about traveling and exploring and finding places that you love that you never knew you would love until you've actually gone there. But photo wasn't where it stopped. I realized that there was something I loved even more than photo, and that was video. I would go and do trips, and I would travel, and all of these places I would go to, I realized that I could be so much more creative with video than I ever could be with photographs. You take a photo, and like people say photos speak a thousand words. Well, there's 24 to 30 frames of photos in a single second of a video, so I'm not good at math, so I can't do it that fast, but it's like 24,000 <laughs> words or something like that. But there's so much that a video can say, and there was a way that I could uh, outlet what I wanted to do creatively in a way that I just never could experience through photographs. And the thing about video is that it not only shows what you love, like a photo does, but it also shows you, and it can show your personality. And if you talk to anyone, I have a very unique personality. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Madison. Uh, but it's just, there's something about the creative aspect of the video that I realized when I came to Biola, it was something I loved and enjoyed was photo and video. But I also started to realize about two years ago when I did my first ever video with a group of friends that it was something I wanted to do after graduation. And I had this huge goal of doing photography and videography after graduation, but it was huge. It was a giant goal that I never thought I would be able to accomplish. And because it was so big, there was no achievable or realistic way to get there. Until someone challenged me to 
write those things down and like actually make a plan. And it wasn't until they said it like twice in the span of two days, I was like, all right, I'll do it. Um, and so that's what I did. I wrote down where I wanted to be 10 years from that exact day. And I looked at it and I went, whoa, those are some big goals that I have. Um, and even after writing it down, it still didn't feel very achievable. It still felt a little too far out there and that I didn't have anywhere to start because I had these big dreams, but I was looking at these huge numbers and these huge things that I wanted to do, and I was still taking Dr. Kim's class on weekends, and I was like, I'm still in college right now. How do I get from where I am to be wanting to graduate and be out of the country and exploring and creating content for brands and other companies? Um, so I, I broke it down, and I did some specific things that I could challenge myself to do in the first month, and in the first three months. And for those of you that aren't public relations majors, which is just like a few of you over here, um, <laughs> there's a thing that we call smart objectives when we make a PR plan. A PR plan can apply to yourself, it can apply to a brand, and it can imply, apply to a company. And basically those are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. And I looked at this and I realized I'd done that without even knowing it. <laughs> um, I, came into the PR major never expecting to be public relations because well, I never heard of it, honestly. And I came into school as an environmental science major and then switched to business and then switched to photography and then finally settled on public relations. Life would have been much easier if I just started with public relations. <laughs> but I realized that this was something I liked. And public relations, I realized, is not something where you have to go after college and sit in an office if that's what you want to do, or be in a nonprofit, or work for a company, or work for events. Those are all great things, and they're great things for every person, but for me, I'm not one to sit behind a desk. I just can't do it. I learned that through internships that I've taken, is that desk work is not for me. I mean, maybe it's a desk on like the side of like the Mediterranean or something, I'll roll with that. But like, if it's a desk in an office, there's not a chance that I'm gonna make it very long. Uh, but I realized that the great thing about public relations is that you can use it every single day in everything you do. And I didn't realize it till I made this for myself and realized that the things that I had learned in class could also be applied to my life even if I never worked in the public relations industry. And that's like a really great thing to find out that what you did in college is actually gonna be helpful and useful. It's great. <laughs> but this is a quote um, that I found a few weeks ago, and I really like it. It's an article from the Huffington Post from an article about travel. And it rings home because I'm someone that my junior year of college, during the fall and spring semester, I traveled to six different states and one different country in the span of the, that year, which was stressful and tiring, but also there was so much that I felt that I learned about myself and about my personal skills that I never would have learned if I stayed here and tried to do those same things around La Mirada. There's just something about being immersed in a different culture, even if it's the culture of a different state, but especially if it's the culture of a different country. And even though countries like Australia are not incredibly different from here, when you're driving on the opposite side of the road, it really wakes you up that you're in a different place. But there is something about travel that is like ed education. It's something that we all, to some extent, love. Like maybe you don't enjoy flying, but everyone enjoys getting out from where they are and finding a new place to be. Um, finding somewhere new to explore, something to experience, because we crave experience with the pre people around us, and we crave making memories. Um, and I knew that if I was ever going to invest in something, it would be travel and experiences and it's more camera gear. But I didn't need to like buy super fancy things, super fun things, like always go and do fun, all these crazy little things. I just wanted to get out and travel. And that's where we come to now, is that we are seven months from graduation. Woo! Wow, that's weird. And <laughs> I, my goal is very simple. After making this plan that feels very achievable, I want to continue following this plan that I have um, to keep being original and true to myself and what I want to do, and to get to the point where after graduation, I can feel confident enough to book a one-way ticket somewhere in the world, fly off, and go create. Um, work for different companies, work for brands, 
but make content that I love. Because even though there are so many things that are great um, about the PR industry, there's just something about me that I want to use that in a way that people would not normally think of. Thank you for listening. <laughs>